So, welcome back, we are discussing about the froth flotation process. Now, I have briefly explained you how it works, now let me get into little bit deeper. True flotation dominates the recovery of the valuable minerals. Now, what is true flotation? The true flotation means that the mechanism what I had shown earlier like in this way that is your selectivity that is selectively your particles are collected which are hydrophobic in nature in the air bubble. So, that is the true flotation, but there are some other ways some other means also your particles may be reported to the froth phase. So, the true flotation dominates the recovery of the valuable minerals and the other two that is your aggregation and entrainment decide the separation efficiency between the valuable and the GAN. What is the meaning of that? That is if we have that how much of material we have recovered through the true flotation process because that is what is my objective, what is my primary aim that I want to recover by valuable minerals in most of the cases by making its surface hydrophobic. So, as the perfectness or uh, at what level you have basically used this true flotation phenomena. So, that will decide that your the recovery of the valuable minerals, because in the other two it is mostly the probabilistic based phenomena. So, the other two decide the separation efficiency between the valuable and the gang, because the other two may not be that selective. Why I am saying so? Let me explain it that in flotation entrainment is a mechanical mass transfer process, is a mechanical process, is a mass transfer process by which particles suspended in the water between bubbles enter the flotation froth from the top pulp region and are transferred to the concentrate. That means, when the water is going to the going to report to the froth phase, it is those particles which are basically carried along with the water to the froth phase. So, it is not that selective. So, if you can minimize that, so that means it will give you a much it is guaranteed cleaner product, but if you cannot reduce it that means, this entrainment is basically decide that what is that your entrainment uh, whether only the your wanted minerals are entrained or your unwanted materials are also entrained. So, that is why the separation efficiency is nothing but that is how much of wanted material you have in the feed material and how much of that you have recovered or you have collected into your concentrate. So, now when the entrainment process is not selective so, and if it is the dominating mechanism for flotation, then it is very difficult that is your of the to maintain the efficiency between efficiency of separation between the valuable and the gang minerals. Both hydrophobic and hydrophilic mineral particles suspended in water, in water can experience entrainment because it is only the suspended particles because of the aeration you have because of the impeller you are trying to start. So, you have got the aerated water and then the particles are suspended irrespective of their your whether they are hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So, because of this entrainment phenomena that is not selective. So, this decides if the entrainment is the dominant phenomena then the separation efficiency will be drastically reduced because it is not selective. The attachment of valuable minerals to air bubbles is the most important mechanism 
that means if my materials if my minerals i have made them hydrophobic the surfaces but say suppose they are not attached to the air bubble surfaces so what will happen so they will still remain remain into my flotation chamber they are not reported into the froth phase and so the attachment of valuable minerals to air bubbles is the most important mechanism and represents the majority of particles that are recovered to the concentrate that is majority of my particles which are reporting to the concentrate if it is a flotation cell so this in this attachment of the hydrophobic particles to the surfaces of the air bubbles and that is the mechanism which uh, is basically responsible for majority of the particles recovery in the concentrate phase. So, how do you make sure that all my hydrophobic materials they are get, get adhered to the surfaces of the air bubbles that is also another challenge to the mineral processing people or the flotation scientists and engineers. All the true flotation is the dominant mechanism for the recovery of valuable mineral and that is the essential goal. The separation efficiency between the valuable mineral and gang is also dependent on the degree of entrainment and physical entrapment. As I said that in any flotation cell we cannot have only one single phenomena that is the true flotation because the water will have to go up certain portion of water will be going up. Now, when they start going up whatever material is coming up into their path and if they are very light and mineral they will be also that is their settling velocity is less than the rising velocity of water then they will be transported to the froth phase. And the physical entrapment that is on top of the surfaces like when you are feeding it feeding the material into the by flotation chamber the very fine particles irrespective of their degree of hydrophobicity they may be lying in the top layer or the just below the top layer of my water into that vessel. So, when the froth phase is established because of the rising bubbles so, these particles are getting entrapped there. So, that is the physical entrapment. So, how far they are playing the uh, role that is how much is that is the entrainment and entrapment because you do not have much selectivity in that process that will decide that what is the separation efficiency because you may have carried out the true flotation perfectly, but if you cannot minimize the effect of entrainment and physical entrapment then your separation efficiency between the valuable mineral and gang mineral will be hampered. So, flotation process can be applied to relatively fine particles why now because if the particles are coarse and heavy their weight will be greater than the adhesion between the particle and the air bubble. How the particles what is the mechanism through which the particles get adhered to the surfaces of the air bubble that I will discuss at a later stage, but just a, just imagine that you have got a bigger particle a coarse and heavy particle and you have got an air bubble. So, your the force downward force that is your uh, the mass of that particle if it is very high in relation to your bubble size or the bubble stability the air bubble at the particle will detach from the bubble that is what I have said that their weight will be greater than the adhesion between the particle and the air bubble. So, there is a force you require that is called the adhesion, uh, adhesive force in between the particle and the air bubble, but if the particle mass is more then that will be weaker 
and the particle will get detached from the bubble. I will explain it through some diagram and through some equations that what do I mean here. So, there are two ways of flotation one is direct flotation another one is called reverse flotation it is nothing but the uh, the mechanism remains same, but whether you want your wanted material to report in the froth fetch that is whether you want to make your wanted material as hydrophobic or sometimes you want to make your unwanted material to be hydrophobic. So, when you want your wanted material to be hydrophobic and report to the froth phase that then we call it direct flotation most of the cases um, it is direct flotation, but there are some instances suppose my unwanted material that is I do not want uh, these materials and their relative volume percent volume fraction volume percentage in the entire your particle volume is much lesser. So, what I try to say that suppose I have got only 1 percent or 2 percent of the entire volume fraction of my particles and that is my unwanted material and you have got 30 percent of the volume fraction occupied by your wanted minerals. Why should I try to make the 30 percent volume fraction of my wanted material to be hydrophobic and try to collect it through the overflow in the froth phase. But if we can then try to add a le much lesser quantity of chemicals and try to make my 1 percent or 2 volume fraction of your unwanted material to be separated out from the mixture of my wanted and unwanted material by lifting them up by uh, forcing them to report to the froth phase. So, that is called the reverse flotation. So, that means in simpler terms direct flotation is in which the mineral is attached to the froth and the gang remains in the tailing here the mineral means your desired mineral and gang is which you do not want. A reverse flotation in which the gang is attached to the froth and minerals remain in tailing about the your direct flotation and reverse flotation. Now, we will get into much more detail on this subject. So, we will discuss about the various other phenomena which occurs that is, but before that I want to show you that in, in much more uh, greater detail that what are the different applications of this your froth flotation processes in various other uh, your applications in mineral processing. That it is currently in use for many diverse applications with a few examples being although I have already mentioned there briefly, but again I am repeating those that is separating sulphide minerals from silica gang and from other sulphide minerals that is even many a times you use this to separate say suppose you have got lead zinc copper ores that is in that assemblage you have got lead ore that is PVS, your copper ore is the CuFeS2 and then the uh, zinc ore that is your ZNS. So, this all three are sulphide minerals. So, and all three are wanted, but the challenge is that how do I separate PVS from CuFeS2 and your uh, ZNS or may be ZNS from CuFeS2 and PBS and like that. So, there also we use flotation even for separating the uh, three different wanted minerals from one another. Then separating potassium chloride from sodium chloride, separating coal from ash forming minerals, removing silicate minerals from iron ores many a times we do it separating phosphate minerals from silicates may be carbonates even non mineral applications such as de inking I have already mentioned it. It is particularly useful for processing fine grained ores that are not amenable to conventional gravity concentration technique this is what I have already explained to you. 
So, if you look at the essential mechanism of flotation involves the attachment of mineral particles to air bubbles in such a manner that the particles are carried to the surface of the ore pulp where they can be removed that is in the froth phase. The process if you look at the entire process of the froth flotation what it demands or what it uh, should have that is the process encompasses the following steps. First you have to liberate your wanted and unwanted minerals and most of the cases as I said that it has to be very fine sizes because as the liberation size demands, but your flotation also demands that it should be in fine sizes because as I have explained that if you have coarse and heavy minerals the bubbles may burst or maybe they will be dislodged from the bubble surfaces. So, the plot flotation process will not be that efficient. So, you have to grind the ore to a size <coughs> sufficiently fine. The grinding the ore to a size sufficiently fine to liberate the valuable minerals from one another and from the adhering gang minerals that is the first condition that you should have proper liberation. Making conditions favorable then for the adherence of the desired minerals to air bubbles. So, how do you create a favorable condition inside your flotation chamber, so that the particles your which are which you want to get adhered to the bubble surfaces that should get adhered you know uh, uh, properly. Then you are creating a rising current of air bubbles in the ore pulp that means, you should have your rising current that is the you should push your bubbles by some means uh, that so that they rise to the up to the froth phase up to the top layer of the pulp. Then forming a mineral laden froth on the surface of the ore pulp that means, you should have a your froth which is a stable and then this should have more concentrated your ore minerals that is what you want. Then removing the mineral laden froth that is if, if you leave the froth phase there then automatically because of the atmospheric pressure the bubble will start will start bursting and because of that again those mineral particles which were lifted up they will try to get settled because of their own mass. So, what is the time difference between the what that is called the froth stability and within that time you have to remove the your froth from that your chamber quickly, but and uh, if you do not do that it is not only the minerals particle which are already uh, carried to the froth phase they will return to the your uh, flotation chamber, but also if you have a froth phase and if it is not collected at a uh, in such a manner that it is synchronous with the fresh minerals which are being carried again by the bubbles they will not have adequate space to get uh, your uh, to get in touch with my scrapper that is through which you are basically collecting them. So, that means, there will be build up of your froth depth. So, you are collecting from a particular depth and if that starts building up. So, that means, there is no uh, it will not reach a steady state and your recovery will start getting um, drastically reduced. So, how you are removing the mineral laden froth? So, this process so therefore, commences with comminution that is to increase the surface area of the ore. So, that is when the particle surfaces are finer you are increasing the surface area of the ore. The ore is ground to very fine your know, into fine powder that is decided based on your liberation size and weighted with water to form a slurry that is it gets you try to mix them up with your water to form a slurry. Now, you add a surfactant chemical that is 
which will selectively sit on your surfaces of your wanted material and in most of the cases it is your ore and this is known as collector and that is also mixed with the slurry to render the desired mineral hydrophobic. That means, you just prepare the your feed material like you have got a mixture of your wanted and unwanted material finally, ground material you pour water you try to mix them up. So, that the particle surfaces are properly weighted and then you add some chemical that is the collector and you try to also mix them up. So, that your entire particle surfaces of your wanted mineral they are getting coated with this kind of your uh, say surfactant that will promote the hydrophobicity of those particle surfaces. The slurry is then placed in the water bath containing frother. So, there is also another chemical we use that is called frother we we'll discuss it later at depth that is that gives the uh, stability to some extent the stability of the froth phase that means, the froth phase does not your uh, get collapsed immediately after reaching the your top layer of the uh, uh, say flotation cell which is aerated to create bubbles that is how we have we are generating the bubbles that I have already explained you. The desired mineral escape water by getting attached to the air bubbles which rise to the surface and form what is called froth this thing I have already discussed. This froth is then removed and the concentrated mineral is refined. Now, this is a small video I have downloaded from the open source and it is by one of the it is uploaded by one of the Indian uh, uh, equipment manufacturing companies in the mineral processing field it is by InSmart Systems head office in Hyderabad. And this shows that this is a flotation cell uh, this basically shows that how do you carry out a laboratory flotation experiment and where uh, you are how you are adding, but these are all manually done in actual plant scale uh, flotation cell these are all being done automatic uh, automatically they are all uh, done automatically in recent times. But this will give you the ideas and this will give you some visualization that how it is being done. So, you see that this is the froth flotation cell that is they are using that is, and this is the impaler. Okay. So, first thing what they will do that this is my mineral that is what I want to separate them out. So, first for laboratory experiment you have taken a pre weighed material you are pouring it into that your flotation cell now you are adding water and after this you will try to stir it by that your stir impaler. Do you see that these are the impalers and it is their typical design but in actual scale it may be designed separately by different manufacturers and now you are trying to mix them uh, aerating them you have not passed much of air bubble now because you have not added any chemical now you are adding chemicals and you are checking with the litmus paper that what is the pH of that. Now you are adding some other chemicals that is you add different types of chemicals for different reasons one is for making hydrophobic and then pH adjustment then you may be adding some kind of your say froth stabilities. So, many chemicals are there that I will discuss in due course of time, but for the time being you just uh, see that that it is being added. Now, you will be stirring it again, again so that these chemicals are also getting properly mixed with this slurry. Now, you are preparing the slurry and you are giving sufficient time. Now, you have started uh, uh, passing air through that and you see this is the froth. Now, they are being lifted and this is the you see the viscosity of this froth and all this you have to main, maintain and this is automatically uh, getting reported because you have made such an arrangement that the froth will be collected. So, these are all the design features and now what you do 
you try to recover it this is a lab skills experiment uh, in actual operation it is being done all automatic. So, you are now collecting all the materials now what you will do you will lift the uh, impaler up. So, that they are free from this material. So, that you do not lose this and you are just taking it out and to see that how much of material remained into that flotation cell and how much you are collecting. So, these are the two differences in the colors you see that these these are much more darker than this page. So, you have collected both the materials in separated stage and now what you have to do you have to dry them up and the, you have to evaporate the moisture and you get the dry powders which are basically you are wanted and this case it may not be wanted material or it depends whether it is a reverse flotation or your direct flotation. So, this is uh, a laboratory demonstration uh, by one of the equipment manufacturers who manufactures this flotation cell um, mostly for laboratory purposes and there is a uh, video I thought that it will help you to understand that how it works to visualize how it works. So, I gratefully acknowledge the InSmart systems for uploading this video into the open domain. Now, you see that these are the conventional flotation cell. So, why I am saying conventional flotation cell because how you generate the bubbles how you uh, mix the your water and the fine particles and the chemicals and then how you are collecting your froth, how you are collecting your uh, the tails that is your rejects this is all different sets that is uh, they are different manufacturers design and then what are the capacities of each individual uh, cells. So, that is also another aspect of this flotation cell. So, here see that this is the froth phase if we have. So, this is the froth overflow in this case you call it your stator and this is the rotor and these are the air how it is coming we have already discussed this picture. So, there is no point in explaining it again. This is another demonstration how the particles get adhered to the bubble surface. So, you have got the agitator this is the sail this is the pulp and now you have got this your air bubble and this is the your demonstration the mineral particles get attached to the bubbles and this is the mineralized froth and you have passed the air through this. This is again I have taken it from the open domain uh, I forgot to acknowledge this your source because I do not remember it right now. So, the basis of froth flotation is the difference in weightabilities of different minerals. Particles range from those that are easily weightable by water that is called the hydrophilic to those that are water repellent that is hydrophobic. Some particles are naturally hydrophobic for example, coal particle their surfaces these particles are naturally your hydrophobic. But still when you try to float the coal particles many times you add some chemicals to make the uh, to increase the intensity of the hydrophobicity or the degree of hydrophobicity of the surfaces. So, that your separation process becomes faster and much more selective. If a mixture of hydrophobic and hydrophilic particles are suspended in water and air is bubbled through the suspension then the hydrophobic particles will tend to attach to the air bubbles and float to the surface that is what we have shown you and I have explained you. The froth layer that forms on the surface will then be heavily loaded with the hydrophobic mineral and can be removed as a separated product. The hydrophilic particles will have such less tendency to attach to air bubbles and so it will remain in suspension and be flushed away that is what you do it in laboratory scale your experiment. Particles can either be naturally hydrophobic or the hydrophobicity can be induced by chemical treatments that is what I have shown you that you are adding some chemicals uh, to make the to increase the degree of hydrophobicity even the particles may be naturally hydrophobic. So, you want to control that your rate of your transport phenomena and all this. 
Naturally hydrophobic materials include hydrocarbons, one example I have given you the coal and non-polar solids such as elemental sulphur. So, these are all naturally hydrophobic minerals and like your hydrocarbons and all this, but most of the cases the degree of hydrophobicity of the naturally occurring minerals is not that pronounced that we can have your froth flotation without adding any uh, chemicals. So, we need to add some chemicals to uh, accelerate this particle separation mechanism based on this froth flotation mechanism. So, we will continue this lecture and um, till then thank you very much.